Well, I know I haven't talked about the tires yet for the GL650. So here they are. Let's take a look here. And the big blocks. Oh yeah. All right, so Kenda big blocks. Why do we go with these? Well, this actually wasn't the original plan. Um, once we kind of built the headlight grill and then did the side covers for the thing, the bike really took on like a post-apocalyptic kind of vibe to it. So as we we're going through tires, I'm like, man, just seems like this would be a fun idea to do. And then, you know, Kenda started offering the uh, rear tire in a 16 or the big block offered in a 16, which, you know, is nice because there's not a lot of tire options at that point other than like a cruiser. So yeah, went ahead and tried these. This is a 140 90 16 in the back. I have not tried to mount it yet. I have not tried to fit it. So by the end of the video, we're gonna know if it's going to clear or not. I'm pretty confident that it will. Um, we'll just, we'll see though. So anyway, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go grab the rims from downstairs, and then I want to actually try the uh, zip tie method to mount these without any spoons. So we're gonna see how that goes too. All right. So to mount these things up, uh, usually I would use tire spoons, but being that I did paint these wheels. Um, in that situation, what I normally do is I outsource those and have somebody with a machine actually mount the tires, but I wanna try the zip tie method. So I know this is no uh, new thing, but I haven't tried it yet. So I wanna go ahead and do that and see if we can get, this, get these tires on. So it might not be too hard, but I'm gonna find out. I guess it's like the curb feelers of motorcycles or something. I don't know. Works for me. So obviously big old zip ties and the idea behind this is that you're basically just getting one bead, uh, one large bead around the, the edge of the rim instead of you know trying to feed two. So I'm gonna hit this with some silicone spray and so we get the tire in. All right folks, we're gonna record this in real time. See how long it takes me. Again, I've never tried it with this method, but it seems simple enough. I've used one spoon. I don't think it's too bad still. Okay. No chips. No chips. That is what we wanted. All right, aired up. 
and everything. That took no time. So combination of uh, the zip ties and then just using one tire spoon three times, man, that did the trick. And then I didn't have to spray the bead with like any soapy water to get it to air up and, and seat. So I don't know if that was just, you know, I got lucky that time, but man, works good. So now on to that one. Alright, so it is time to start assembling things. I've got everything for the swing arm to go on the wheel laid out, and then I have some of the linkage here which will do. And uh, because it's just easier to hold, what I'm going to do is basically back to front. So I got the back wheel in the wheel chalk. I'll go ahead and put the final drive, hang the final drive, hang the, uh, the, the brake drum here, and then from there I can, I can wiggle the swing arm on it. And then after that, I can bring the frame in, get the frame on that. You know and so on and so forth so uh, I just pulled the forks out of the ultrasonic cleaner again uh, just run through those through there twice and I think what I'm going to go ahead and do on those take some scotch bright and just do like a vertical kind of grain into it and then probably clear coat over it if not they might clean up now and uh, just rock them so I want to keep those like a different color instead of just going black like everything else so it'd be a nice little piece of contrast so anyway I'm gonna set the camera up we're gonna get the swing arm on and keep going from there. And then, and then in the previous videos you saw I was uh, brushing on some, some paste here. That's a uh, Honda 77, like Super Molly, which is definitely something you need. There it is. That can hang out fine. All right, so we're ready. I have my uh, swing arm bearings in the frame and then one on the other side of the swing arm here. So this thing's ready to go. All I need to do is grab out the anti-seize and just uh, make sure I get a little bit on the pivot pin here. So shouldn't be too hard. I'm probably gonna climb up here and uh, we'll get this thing kind of wiggled on and from there, it should be awesome. So 
I can then uh, go ahead and get the shock on and then we'll have a nice like supported unit that I can go ahead and get the steering bearings in, get the triples on. And then from there, it, all it is is just finishing up the forks and then, you know, putting the front end on. So getting pretty close to a roller. All right, next up, gonna do a taper roller conversion on the steering stem. This thing came stock with like uh, just the individual ball bearings. And you know, the, the races were a little a little grimy. Like you could tell the uh, that it had like a spot where it just wanted to sit, like it would just naturally wanna be straight and then you'd have to put extra force on it to get it to turn. So anyway, we're gonna alleviate that new taper roller, a lot stronger, just better in general. So off we go.
All right, guys, so getting ready to get the wheel on the front end here. And before I do that, I need to go ahead and install the bearings and then set in my axle spacers along with the speedometer drive. So I have a little product here, speedometer drive delete. On this particular bike, we're not using a cable driven speedometer anymore. So this thing is just gonna be hanging out and really ugly. Same thing on like CX500s I've done. I've had these made in the past. Now this is for uh, like CX500s, GL650s, 500s, um, a lot of different Hondas. I know they fit like FT500s and stuff. So again, something I have produced, if you want to see them, if you think they're, uh, if, if you think you'd like to maybe purchase one of these, they'd be about 50 bucks. Um, I don't have any made currently. This is my last one, but I can have some produced if the desire and the, and the demand is there. I had a made in the past. I've sold a handful of them and, uh, and it's a cool little product. So just let me know if it's something you want to see, but it definitely helps clean up the front end. I can offer them in, you know, polished or just regular regular aluminum finish like this so anyway let me know what you think This thing looks tough, doesn't it? Man, I am super excited. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and take this thing back to that warehouse that you might've seen. And the next mission is gonna go ahead and like clean up the seat pan, paint that, and then start working on maybe like stripping the tank. And then hopefully I can bring the engine back over and start like power washing that, cleaning it, detailing it. And then I'm gonna have to replace some gaskets anyway on it, just out of uh, precaution. So we'll go ahead and get that taken care of, but yeah. I'm loving where this thing's at right now. So it's gonna look awesome. I'm really excited about it. Super tough looking, yeah. All right guys, that does it for this video. Pretty straightforward, just got this thing from a pile of parts into a nice roller, looking pretty tough. Very excited about the project, so hope you, got, hope you guys are too. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up here. The next video you're gonna see uh, not sure. Could be the engine, could be detailing some other parts, but you know, we'll get something up here eventually. And uh, if you like this video, definitely hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, check out some other videos on the channel, whether it be daily vlogs, working on this thing, doing this GS550 here, CX500 build, my KLR. Who knows? I got a ton of, ton of content on here. So anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.